Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Bishop on a Bike podcast. I am Jim Hazelwood, your host. This is episode 29. And today we're going to be talking with Sarah Anderson and Kim Bergstrand, who work with me here in the New England Synod. And we're going to be discussing a project called Forward Leadership Community. So Forward was created for congregations in the New England Synod that want to engage in transformational ministry and connect with their communities. Uh, We started this in 2014, and um, it's taken us several years of working out a lot of kinks. I think you're going to appreciate this conversation no matter where you are. If you get to the end and you want to learn more, I encourage you to go to the website of the New England Synod, nelutherans.org, and uh, there's some links on there that will connect you to Forward Leadership. You can connect with Sarah or Kim to learn more about it. Once again, thanks to the Mission Investment Fund for their sponsorship. Uh, Thank you for listening, and let's get right to the conversation. We start off talking with Kim, and then Sarah follows next. So Forward Leadership is our Synod's uh, renewal strategy for congregations. We like to say that congregations are always in a state of renewal, Um, but some congregations have gotten to the point where they are seeing um, different symptoms of decline, whether that is uh, decline in membership, uh, decline in finances, decline in energy and participation. So they're seeing something happen in their congregation. And there is a thought of we don't know what to do next. We've tried a lot of stuff, or maybe we haven't tried a a ton of stuff, but we're a little bit um, scared, a little bit nervous, a little bit um, feeling like uh, there should be something that we're doing um, in order to move forward, um, in order to engage more people um, and to be able to do ministry effectively. So we developed Forward Leadership, which is a community learning model, Um, For congregations who are in this space, um, one of the things that we do together is we share experiences. A big important part of uh, forward leadership is this sense of community that we're not alone and we're going to do this together. Um, And it is not a program um, per se. Um, It is a year-long learning process uh, with two overnight retreats and six uh, day-long seminars. We invite teams to participate, which is a lot different than some other programs. It's not just the pastor. It is uh, the pastor or the deacon um, who is leading the congregation um, and four three to four lay leaders uh, that form a team we call the forward leadership team. And they attend all of uh, the seminars and retreats. We also ask that congregations um, have in their, have at back at home, a home-based team called the accountability team. Um, And we've come up with a lot of great names for that, like the home team or the ripple team or the circle effect team. Um, And those folks listen to what, the away team, the forward leadership team uh, learns. So after the forward leadership team attends a seminar, they go back, they meet with their accountability team and strategize about how they're going to take what they've learned and use it and implement it in the congregation. Um, So that's a very different model than we've seen before. Um, And part of the content has to do uh, with leading change. Um, So those congregations, they've been feeling stuck Uh, So the uh, strategy is to give them some tools um, in order to diagnose what's going on um, and implement changes. Um, So that in a nutshell, I think, is a little bit about Ford. Yeah, Sarah, what would you, uh, you, what's your take on this? Yeah, I I think that uh, obviously what Kim has said is, is the is the program and the intent and the purpose behind it i think some of the key things about what forward is is that community that we're building but it's also deeply addressing a culture shift uh, not only within congregations but in how we 
resource congregations, how we engage with thinking about where congregations are called to serve and how to live out their mission and how to engage in a changing in a changing culture that surrounds those churches. Um, so for leadership is that initiative and is a community and is a culture shift in and of mm. itself and how we do it and how we how we work with our congregations and how our congregations work with their people and with their ministry. And so the, what, what, why, why um, it, one of the things that's different is that it's not just a single workshop day uh, where people come together. This group actually spends <laughs> a year together. So you can have like five to 10 or more congregations together on a monthly meetings on, on Saturday. Why that model? What's, what's important about that? The, the model, the importance about that is that there's a community gathering repeatedly. And each of those, there is not a set plan that if you participate in forward, that this that you're going to do this step, then this step, then this step. So um, what they do is they gather and um, have the information from their congregational assessment tool called their CAT that tells them a whole picture of what their congregation's um, drivers are, those things that are really important um, to the congregation. We like to call that, I like to call that their fingerprint. What's the, what's the unique aspects um, of the congregation and what are the shifts culturally within them that they need to change? What are their priorities? And, um, and what's the culture? What are, what are, um, what are the ways that they receive information and engage information? So they gather for that. And, um, they have, we've got right now this year, we have 13 congregations that gather and all 13 of them come from with different different pictures, different identities, different cultures. But then we talk about, um, for one of our seminars, what it means to have to address adaptive challenges versus technical challenges. And one of the great things about that is you have 13 congregations, each different, and yet all of them have to do something, what we call dancing with fear. They have to dance with the fear of what it means to be church in this time and place and what it means to face some of that decline as congregations or some of that uncertainty about how to take their next step into the future. And they, the gift of forward leadership for our congregations is often that you can have a small but vital congregation of 40 people who are full of energy and resources. And you can have a congregation of 200 people that's, it, that's beginning to see rapid decline in membership and, uh, and feel, a, feel um, a sense of urgency around what they have, have to do in order to stop that decline. Um, and yet both of them or all of them are facing some of the same fears about how do they shift their focus to share the gospel uh, with their community and in their place versus how to versus survival or preservation. Uh, so one of the benefits they get is from being with one another, seeing other congregations in different places as you're going through this year long time together. But it seems to me that uh, Kim, one of the other pieces of this this ongoing month to month meeting is there's some kind of accountability as opposed to, and also you've got lay people and clergy <laughs> together, as opposed to just like, well, we're going to do a workshop one day and then it, it relies on them to kind of figure that out. Could you say a little bit about that as kind of part of the structure for the whole thing? <clears throat> yeah, I think the uh, one of the key elements of the forward leadership um, community um, focus is that uh, what we're doing is we're teaching folks how to navigate adaptive change. And adaptive change takes three to five years. Um, and it takes a lot of energy and a lot of focus. Um, and there has to be some consistent movement if you are actually going to move forward. Having that 
uh, accountability team in the congregation and teaching them um, when the board leadership team goes back and teaches them about the different um, seminar topics. So we talk about um, real um, gritty kind of things like we talk about anxiety and how that influences uh, a congregation and how people respond. They get anxious when they are not quite sure where we're going or they're fearful and that translates into resistance or even sabotage or conflict. How do we navigate that um, as clergy and lay leaders? Um, so it's better to have 10 people in the congregation that are that are trained or um, equipped to deal with some of those responses than just one or two people. So if you're actually going to go in and make some of these significant um, adaptive changes to the culture, to the way you're relating to one another, moving from that sort of 19th century church model to this 21st century church model, which is all about we're going out, we're focused more on the community and outside of our walls from more of that country club mentality that we sometimes see where it's about us in here and what we're looking for ourselves. That's a huge shift and people are going to have some um, negative responses. So we really dig into that. We also dig into the, to why are we here? What is our sense of purpose and mission and why has God called us to be here in this place, in this community today. Um, that is another shift of just, we haven't gone outside our walls in 20 years. Now now we need to go and talk to the community. Um, so teaching this, this, this group of people um, how to do that. And it's not rocket science. I mean, we've all talked to people outside of the church, but it's the way we talk and the way we think about it. We're not here um, necessarily to recruit. We're here to learn more. We're here to develop relationships. So that's a really important um, part of this. And it takes time. We're not going to be able to do this tomorrow. It's going to take a year of thinking for a lot of our congregations as they're part of the forward leadership community. They they're just taking this all in and learning how how to how to relate to one another differently and how to think outside of the box. And they may not move forward and do um, some of the the things that we're we're teaching until the following year. Um, and um, so we've 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 noticed that that it may not be an immediate thing. Adaptive change is three to five years until well, we I actually see some change of habit. I love how you just took congregations from the 19th century to the 21st century and you just <laughs> skipped a hundred years in that, uh, in that narrative that, that you all that. I'm wondering if at this point we can, we can give uh, people who are listening to this kind of uh, some examples, some stories. Do you each have a story about a congregation? Like, so we've kind of talked some theory about adaptive change and technical change. And so what's a, what's a congregation? You don't have to name a congregation, but just tell the story of a congregation that went through forward and what did they tackle and what did they learn? Um, you know, and, and either of you, whoever thinks of, of a particular uh, case that would help people understand it with an example. So I think of, um, I'm, one, one congregation comes to mind that had been um, pretty inwardly focused um, and they really recognized during that forward year that they had not um, connected with the community. So we do a um, uh, activity where uh, we literally look around the neighborhood and and sort of take a tour of our neighborhood. What's close? What's 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 around us? And they noticed that there was a laundromat um, not too far from their congregation in their community. Um, and they decided that this was a place where a lot of people were coming in, and they learned that it was pretty darn expensive to do a load of laundry nowadays. I mean, I I I think. It was it was like five dollars a load for a wash and five dollars for a dry. So they um, did some fundraising within the congregation. They raised, I think it was about five hundred dollars. Took over that laundromat um, for the day um, and paid for folks' laundry. And they hung out there and they talked with people and they got to know them. So that was like a huge 
shift for them um, to wander outside and connect with their community that way. Not only were they, um, you know, providing um, free laundry, but they were there having conversations with the folks that came in and developing relationships. So that, I mean, it it's not like we solved world hunger, but they got outside and they and they d- actually did something for the community and they and they formed new relationships. And, and, and so and when you talk that, about that story, I think a lot of people would hear that. Oh, that was great. They raised five hundred dollars and help people with a day of laundry. But while that is fine, nothing wrong with that. The more central piece that you identified when you is they hung out in the laundromat that day and talked with people and that was the shift not the not the, the not the you know providing free laundry for a day it was the shift of the well, congregation actually learning how to get out into the community that's a great yeah. great story sarah what have you got well one of the gifts of forward and that monthly back-to-back meeting is that they check in with each other and um, during that check-in time, they they have a chance to share what they've done between our meeting times, between our seminars. Um, and it, I think that in and of itself holds them accountable because they feel like there's some urgency to, well, we've got to have a story to tell <laughs> or we have to show some progress that um, that is sometimes hard to do when you're just out on your own. Um, trying to make those changes and make those steps. But then in the sharing of the stories, often when we start in January, our congregations come and um, the congregations that have participated are there and the congregations that are beginning their next year are there at the same time. And inevitably the congregations just beginning ask the congregations just finishing their first forward year, well, how many more people have come and what kind of changes can we expect to see in finances and membership and number of people in worship. Um, And, and the people who are ending the congregations that are ending kind of laugh and say, we were there too. We were looking for numbers to change. And then they say, but we don't know exactly how many more people are in worship or how much our finances have changed. We can tell you that we have better engagement. We have better, um, more energy. We're, we're going out into our communities more. And so when they tell their stories, it's by the end, the way they hear these stories, like the laundromat is different. A congregation beginning forward would probably hear that and think, well, maybe what we need to do is go over and raise $500 and pay for somebody's laundry. The difference at the end is that they're saying, how do we engage in conversations in a new way? How do we think about uh, these stories in a different way? And so one, one of the ones I think about is a congregation um, that had a, had a yearly tag sale. And often we get stuck in a rut with our programs and we just continue to hold the tag sale because that's the thing that this congregation does and everybody's expecting it. But they um, blew up balloons and uh, wrote questions on the balloons and had a conversation chair. And then they had they had people who could go and sit and pull down a balloon and talk to each other. And, and they said that we had conversations we never expected to have between members of our congregation that see each other every week um, and with people from our community coming in and out of the tag sale that we never would have had previously before engaging this in a different way. So they're no longer doing it just to get more people into church. Now they're having these conversations so that they can connect with their community. And and they're sharing those stories and hearing those stories. And the congregations get ideas about how to connect, um, very specific and detailed ones, but they're not getting ones that they have to try. And more than that, they're learning that it isn't about doing a specific thing for more people to come in. They're remembering how important it is simply to connect with people and create meaning. Right. And so that's at the very beginning when you said it's not a program, um, Mm -hmm. because 
every each congregation needs to to figure this out. Um, you know, thinking back to when the three of us sat together for breakfast in Easton, Massachusetts, what is that like five years ago, and started dreaming up this project. Um, and the two of you have really run with this. What have you each learned over the course of the last? I guess we started in what twenty fourteen, something like that, uh, maybe twenty fifteen. Um, what have you learned? Uh, which will then lead us into Forward 2.0. So, but before we get to Forward 2.0, what have you learned over the course of the, you know, like compare that first or second year to what you're doing now? Because I know you, you say it's 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 really evolved. I, I think what I've learned is that it isn't just about providing good content. It's a it's about really. Um, having flexibility ourselves as leaders. It's about the relationships and the community we develop. And it's about remembering that um, we're in it for the long haul together. Uh, so that there's, in in the five years, uh, we're in our sixth year of, fo- the beginning of our sixth year of, of forward group. And, and I think the way Kim and I even lead that is different. It's far more relational. It's um, how, w- how we've adapted our leadership model. Um, it's w- we've learned to expand it. We've under we've begun to understand that if we are not consultants in this work, um, consultants are people who come in and share their expertise and their experience and and give particular steps. Um, and so we do some consulting in that work, but we are really coaching these congregations to really know who they are and have transparency and share and um, engage and, and um, so in many ways, love those congregations for who they are so that they can love others for who they are. Um, And and the, right. So it, it expands. It's, um, it's a ministry um, rather than, a program or a seminar or an education component that we're doing. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's yeah. a community that we, I, I, th- and after five years, I still say, I think I can say this for Kim and I, but I know that I can say this for Kim and I, that they are our family, that they're a community of people of God's people that we care for and, and have, joy in watching how they share the gifts that they have um, with with our with our synod. I think I detected a little emotion there when you were talking about family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Sorry, that's an inside joke for us who folks who work with Sarah, who's kind of always the cut to the chase one, but there she is <laughs> getting soft on us. That's great. <laughs> Kim, what, what have you learned? What have you seen that's different from five years ago? Oh, you know what I've learned? I've learned that this, this, um, I, like Sarah said, it is a community and it is, it is always evolving, um, and always changing. Like, even though we have, um, like sort of a set, um, curriculum, I, I don't even like to call it a curriculum, that each year it is like, depending on, on, on who is part of our, our, our cohort and our community, um, each one of those seminars is different. Um, it's different because of who's there. Um, and, and we're modeling this sort of adaptive leadership because we'll adapt in the middle of a seminar if something comes up. Um, and, you know, there's flexibility um, in our curriculum. But sometimes Sarah and I are just like, I never even left, thought about it that way. Mm. Um, so they're asking really good questions and pushing us to even um, go further um, in, in what we do. Um, yeah, and I will echo of Sarah. It, it is it is a family, and it's 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 an organic um, um, experience. Um, we don't just graduate folks um we stay in touch and um we're watching where they are and and willing to to um come in and and have conversations with them afterwards as well so um we're famous for tearing up at the end of each um (laughs) program year at the final at the final um retreat um both of us because it's kind of like 
we've gotten to know you and expect to see you every month and it's hard to to kind of like hmm. release uh, release that um so i don't think we ever fully released it <laughs> i love it um, i love it always part of the community. And so uh, yeah. it looks like we've had about 40 or so congregations go through this uh so it's a different group uh every year and so the next step, let's talk about the next step, because with all that you've learned, you've also identified some particular needs. And so we're now moving forward into forward 2.0. Um, what, what's, what's forward 2.0? Does that mean that forward 1.0 is going away or, 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 you know, no. 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 Okay. So let's, it's let's, we got, we got 1.0. Let's not start any rumors. Uh, we got 1.0 and 2.0. What, what's, what's 2.0? 2.0 is an expansion and a continuation of forward, um, the forward leadership community. So many of our congregations after forward started talking about how um, after a year, they finally had a handle on what they were doing and what they needed to do uh, and were poised and ready. Um, but then they're on their own. They don't have that monthly check-in holding them accountable or sometimes shaming them <laughs> into coming up with something or creating a sense of urgency or accountability for them. Um, and, and so they, they'd finished the year and they wanted, they want, they needed a little bit more, somebody to kind of walk them through the work that they were doing. It wasn't that they needed more information. They had received all kinds of information and engaged in all kinds of different ways through the seminars during forward, but now they were really getting ready to put that into practice. Um, and then there wasn't the community to, to kind of surround them and hold them in that. And, and so they, they wanted help and there's, there's actually 50 congregations that have participated from the new England synod. And there's only two of Kim and I to help, coach that. And so um, they wanted two things. They wanted a, a reunion because <laughs> they liked getting together. <laughs> and But they also wanted help in make it, putting those things into practice. So Forward 2.0 is a coalition of coaches, um, people who um, have been trained, uh, have received their ELCA level one coaching certification, um, but also have a under, have an understanding of the CAT and of what forward leadership does and teaches. And so quarterly through the year, um, those coaches are now matched with any forward congregation that wants to participate in Forward 2.0. And they'll, as they conclude forward, the congregation's do a 90 day plan and the coaches come and check in and say, so where did you hit roadblocks? How do you, how, how are you moving forward according to your goals and your adaptive challenges and um, your priorities as a congregation? And what do you need to continue to, to push forward in that way? And so they'll, they'll meet every 90 days for the for a second year um, and they'll meet in the congregation rather than having the congregations all gather together they'll have a specific coach um, and those are lay leaders and pastors throughout our synod who are tremendously gifted mm -hmm. individuals nice nice um before we go on kim with a little bit more on 2.0 um could you just describe cat we've you we've thrown that around here and yeah. And and people might think that we're opening an animal shelter or something like that. <laughs> so to start off the uh, the forward year, uh, when when a congregation enrolls in the forward leadership community, we have them take a health assessment, um, and the CAT, which is the church assessment tool, is provided by Holy Cow Consulting. It's like an eighty question online assessment covers a wide variety of um, the different parts of congregational life from um, hospitality to governance to theological perspective to worship. Um, it also digs into energy, how much energy a congregation has, their sense of 
purpose and mission and um, something they called satisfaction, which is not what you would think of like, we're just happy. It's more of that concept of shalom and that feeling of connection to God and one another um, when we gather as a, as a faith community. Um, so it measures all of those um, aspects of congregational life. And we receive a, a report uh, Sarah and I do a lot of the interpretations. We work one-on-one -on -one with the congregation and walk through their report uh, page by page. We also have other members of the, um, the Synod staff, Tim Roser and Paul Sinat, who um, will sometimes already have done the CAT with a congregation as they go through transition. So we also use this during the call process in order to help better match um, congregations uh, with clergy um, during the call process. So we use the CAT all year long when a um, congregation enrolls in Forward, they get a big binder at their first retreat and we tell them to put their cat in there um, and then we give them different handouts for each seminar but we go back to the cat every single time we say let's look at your drivers let's look at your uh, critical success factors these are areas that um, they have identified themselves um, through this um, assessment these are areas that that either need some um, additional energy put put in or need a, a overhaul, maybe a complete change. Um, and we also identify their overall um, congregational um, uh, culture. Um, there's a there's a really great piece in there where we can um, think about how we communicate with a congregation um, because of, of different characteristics of their culture, uh, identifies um, whether they're more of a family oriented. We think about ourselves as a big family, whether they're more tradition bound, whether they're more inclined um, um, to uh, be flexible and adaptable. So when we're talking about change and knowing the culture um, is very important because we won't um, ask them to do um, a, a huge shift or a huge change if their congregation comes across as less adaptable, more inflexible. You're going to do a series of smaller um, changes rather than um, one fell swoop. So CAT has been really, really important um, as part of for leadership. Um, we also um, are looking looking to have some congregations retake the CAT after three to five years after they've gone through for the forward year and gone through a couple of years of coaching because we want to measure um, their health and vitality, but also see if some of that adapt change, um, that stuff they maybe, uh, you know, started in their forward year and have worked on for a couple of years, whether those shifts are actually happening um, and have some evidence-based um, data um, in, in order to re really measure that. So we're looking forward to that. That's part of Forward 2.0, um, the, 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 uh, having that second cat assessment and evaluation of, of the congregations that participate. Yeah, excellent. And, and I think that um, I have uh, connected with Emily Swanson, who's the president of Holy Cow Consulting, and hope to have her on a not too distant future podcast so she can go into the uh, into more of the details. It's definitely pr the best of all of the tools that I've seen over the years in terms of helping you um, understand your your congregation. Um, so as we're kind of starting to move towards wrapping this up, and I know we could go on and on, we could probably spend the whole morning talking about this, um, but uh, uh, so is there anything else that you think, you know, would be really helpful for people to know about uh, what, what Forward and Forward 2.0 are all about? I would say, um... Forward is uh, one of the things folks think is forward is for congregations that are small, um, that are in serious decline. Um, but we have forward congregations come in and, yeah, we have small, we have small but mighty, we have everywhere in between. We have congregations that are actually quite healthy. But they want to just narrow down. They want to. They want to 
reevaluate their, their focus and mission. Um, and the forward year actually helps them to do that as well. So yeah. it's like, it, you, it's not just for one um, type of congregation, um, all of different, different levels of health and vitality. Well, and I think um, that's and, really and important and because shape. in this day and age, you know, any congregation that today, this month, this year, this, this quarter, uh, things feel good and safe and comfortable. Um, if you are not learning how to be nimble and adjust to what's going on, uh, it's going to catch up with you. And so I think that's really important. And we have seen that shift over the years, uh, with, uh, you know, congregations of variety of, not only sizes, but dynamics come in and, and be a part of that. That's a really good point. Sarah, anything else you do you think we need to make sure people know about? I think it follows on what Kim is saying is that we are as church, and by that I mean wider church, shifting and changing how we how we relate to one another and the world. And one of the things that I think um forward does is not only help with the renewal of that, but it helps us think about how to be engaged in partnerships, how to have the flexibility, how to be nimble, um, so that if if there's um, what we think of as um, large churches or um, and I don't even want to say healthier churches because some of our smaller churches are some of our healthiest, but to have these churches be engaged in opportunities for partnership, for exploration together, um, it, regardless of size and culture, it, it just helps engage and open up possibilities uh, for sharing together, for engaging in, in expressing what, it means to live as um, people of God in their communities. And instead of over and against one another, how do we live into that in relationship with one another? Uh, it's not just about renewal or numbers or survival. It's really about how do we engage our communities in this incredible promise that we are God's gifted people and that we have this abundance to share with the world. And so if uh, somebody's listening to this and they are a New England Synod congregation and they've, you know, never heard of it or which <laughs> that may be the case, you know, it's hard to believe, but, um, or if they're just, they've heard about it, but now they're interested in learning more, what, what should they do? Um, and also then on the other hand, if there's somebody that's in a congregation or in some other part of the country that's interested in, in talking with either of you about it, what's the best way to connect with both of you? you can email us. <laughs> okay. So I'll put your email addresses in the show notes if people wanted that. They yeah. can also go to the uh, New England Synod website, which is nelutherans.org. I think there's a forward leadership uh button yep. there they can tab and, and connect with you and read more about it and it'll take yeah. them to the forward leadership blog and as well as our archive of newsletters that show all kinds of things about our program and what we do yeah. mm -hmm. good okay go ahead Kim. and in person uh we will be at senate assembly offering a workshop introductory workshop on forward leadership so that's in june all right good well, great. Thanks very much to both of you. Thank you.